Hi, my name's Mark. I'm one of the pastors here at Trillium. I'm a tormented soul. And I'm tormented because I really hate gardening. I've never liked it. I have really no time for it. So a few years back when my real estate agent told me that I needed to reseed my front yard in order to get the best resale value for the house, and I, I talked about this a few weeks ago in a recap, the, 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 the thought that came over my mind is, oh, I've got a garden. I, I don't like gardening. Eventually, I got more topsoil put in, as you know the whole story there. But anyway, the point is, this little emanation of grass comes up, and I'm looking at it, and I feel a sense of relief. But it's just the first step. I mean, the, the little seedlings are coming up, but it doesn't mean life's totally taken hold. I'm just seeing the first fruits of this life. And, and in fact, in, in, in honesty, I, I didn't get the chance to see the lawn flourish to its full potential, to thrive in a way that I would have liked to, because I sold the house. I don't, I've still never gone back to look at it. You know, and we're, we're invited into something more than existence, Jesus tells us, when we join with him. Uh, when we at Trillium say, join with him to be God's hands in the world. We're promised more than existence, and we're promised more than even growth. Jesus promises us abundant life, thriving life, and the joy that goes with thriving life. And, and I, I realize in, in my understanding that you can exist by yourself, and you can even grow on your own, but you cannot thrive as a person by yourself. You thrive within a community of people, within an ecosystem. And the same way that a plant can, can exist or even grow on its own, but it really can't thrive on its own. It needs to be part of something bigger than itself, and it's connected in a way that makes it into a garden of some type. Uh, for instance, in, in a healthy garden, it's not just the plant by itself that allows it to be uh, uh, thriving in its own nature. I mean, it's, a garden, for instance, has really great soil in it, so it allows the water to immediately sink down in, in, and water the roots of the plants. A, a, a plant has allies in a frogs. Frogs are a really essential part of a healthy garden. They eat lots of the little critters that would like to take advantage of the plant. So the presence of frogs is part of this bigger ecosystem. Uh, birds and and bees and butterflies are another essential component that gives evidence to a thriving community of plants. Their, their presence is a signal that something healthy is occurring in that world. The, the, the presence of, of or, or worms in the topsoil and their decomposing nature is a sign that something as healthy is unfolding. Minimal, plant, minimal weeds, for instance, is also another sign of, of healthy, thriving plant life as a garden. Also, uh, the, just the foliage itself on the plants is a signal to us. And if you put all these together, you realize that a single thriving plant is an impossibility. It takes all these different components, this giant ecosystem, to make it work properly. And, and I'm thinking about that for my own life. And, and, and I'm play, taking the analogy of the garden into my own life, that I, I can exist or grow on my own, but I certainly can't thrive. I, I need you to thrive. I, I need my neighbor to thrive. I need my community to thrive. And in fact, I cannot thrive by myself. My community is immediately drawn upwards as I begin to grow into that world of thriving. And as my community is diminished, so am I diminished with it. And we realize today that we're part of really one giant community in the world. We're all interconnected with each other. And the real, realization I've come to is we're all going to really rise together or we're all going to fall together. It's a kind of scary thought, to be honest. It's going to require huge changes in our lives with each other. At Trillium, we recognize these changes in our lives as, a, uh, as part of our core values. How important it is that, for instance, we offer friendship and fellowship to all, and not just a few or some or many even, but to all. That we get into the practice of radical hospitality with people we know well and with people we don't. Or, or, for instance, how as important it is in this ecosystem of human life that we make kindness one of our critical features of life together. Or that we show integrity and honesty in our dealings with each other. Or, or that we are capable of seeking and giving forgiveness one to another. Of embracing the diversity of life that's around us as it is in the garden of life. And these are all elements or signposts that something is thriving in our midst. A life has taken hold to the point that it thrives amongst us. And the most um, important realization I've come to in recently is, is that this is critical for the world because we are all in this garden, so to speak, together.